Um, speaking of films, uh, you watched the new Child's Play remake. I mean, yeah. pe- people are all over the place on these, of course. Remakes, there's a lot of passion, a lot of anger, yeah. a lot of uh, praise, too. I've, I've heard good things, I've heard bad things. Yeah. Where, where did you stand? Well, I'll say, too, when I go to these films, I'm never... I'm always conscious of it because I love... We all love a good original film that sure. you see for the first time. You know, like Indiana Jones. Yeah, it was based on a bunch of serials, but when it yep. came out, that was, it was the first still, yeah. of its kind. Yeah. Um, and I'm always looking for that. I love sure. films that take risks like that. Yeah. So with that said, uh, Child's Play. I'm like, do I see this movie? Should and I you have that? like you have a uh, a kind of connection to Child's Play as being one of your first like real horror movie experiences and everything too, right? Like that, so that there, there's got to be a little part of you um, yeah. that holds that deer, even if, you know. I saw the film. Okay. Uh, and I was actually pleasantly surprised. I saw some of the um, the good reviews beforehand. I didn't read anything, but I saw I got like a 75 yep. or an 80 on Rotten Tomatoes again. Yeah. So uplifted, went in, open-minded, and it actually, it was the best remake I could think of uh, without... You know, Brad Dorif, um, mm-hmm. and yeah, because Mark Hamill did the voice on this one. For yeah, Chucky. which he did amazing. I thought it was so good. And I think they paid homage to the actual original series while making something entirely their own. Yep. And it is different enough because when you think about it, all right, uh, plot ruiner here. Um, there's no voodoo. Yeah, they've no, been pretty open about that, so that's barely yeah. even a plot ruiner. No Charles Lee Ray. Yeah. Um, kid's name is Andy. I mean, sure. that's kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing now, because, yeah. you know, Toy Story, I'm sure toys, they were riffing on that poster. They've, yeah, all the, the yeah. promotional stuff have been really riffing on Chucky killing the toys and stuff. But did those Child's Play guys, did they look at Toy Story when it came out in, what, 94, <laughs> 96? And say, yeah. like, fucking Andy? Really? Yeah, who it's knows? Like, yeah, it, who knows? Maybe it, it was a be. little thing. Yeah, yeah. Or a wild coincidence. Could be, because it is, you know, it's a... Common name. It's a, and it sounds kiddish. Yeah, so, and how was Aubrey? I, I know she'd been. I I've seen her doing promotional stuff for it, and mm-hmm. you could to me, and she basically said it on. I can't remember which which show it was right now. Um, she basically said like people just don't give me a chance, of yeah. there being like my weird, wacky, cynical, like oddball self in these roles, right? Just yeah. because of Parks and Rec and stuff like that, yeah. where people really gravitate and loved what she did, and she's a great actress. Yeah. I killed it, but. How was she in the film? And did she keep it straight? Or was there any of that wackiness in there? Cause Very little. Yeah. And that was a surprise. Um, pleasant surprise. Both yeah. me and Liz, when we watched it, I know she came in a little bit jaded saying, like, oh, have you watched Parks and Rec? I sure. haven't seen it. I've seen the YouTube clips yeah. of uh, Aubrey so doing her thing. So you kind of know what she does. Yeah, Yeah, I know what she did. I thought she was fine. She that's did great. really good. That's yeah, great. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's a, it's a great chance for an actor to get to go outside their comfort zone or or just be taken serious in a different manner. Because uh, yeah. comedians and uh, uh, famously known for comedic acting or whatever, the, you do typecast is still a real thing. I yeah. mean, and it's cool to to let them you know have that opportunity because there's so many damn times that I feel like people don't get the chance. Oh, well, Jim Carrey, Robin Williams, those yeah. guys like some of their more serious roles. Oh yeah, they're on par with like well, let's 20, call them what was it twenty four hour actors. or whatever uh, the Robin Williams one where he's twenty four hour photo. Oh my god, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. the first time I watched that, I was just like, holy shit! Like, well, I thought he stole like, the show in Good Will Hunting. Yeah, well, of course, yeah, amazing. And, and what then was Dead that? Poet Society uh, and Death to Smoochie was it or whatever? Where he's that Barney esque? Oh, dude, it's pretty good too. <laughs> he, he, like I liked him in those weird, the weird roles. I think Ed Norton was in that too. He's, yeah, yeah, he's always good. Uh, yeah, man, it was a. Uh, Robin Williams, but there again, yeah, one of those comedic actors that did something outside the box, and he got dark. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, like there, there was some real horror movie element to that, and I, I, I loved it. Um, speaking of Child's Play, I was actually at the Calgary Horror Con this last weekend here, and um, it's uh, it's not too crazily big, but it's big enough where there's enough people. There's some great guests. It's uh, it's still you can really like interact with all the the horror celebrities that you want and. Still got rapport. Yeah. I ran into Bill Mosley again, and uh, it was cool. We, you know, remember the last time we saw each other, and yeah, it was a really cool guy. I met his yeah. wife. It was cool. Child's Play, though, I was mentioning because uh, I saw um, Alex Vincent, who was the original Andy from the oh, okay, first yeah. one, the second one, and then uh, Cult of Chucky. 
yeah, it was just cool to kind of see the, the Chucky fandom out there, too. And most people out there are all, like, really hardcore 80s, ni- early 90s, like, 80s horror fans. Yeah. And, you know, there was a lot of, like, bad-mouthing the, the, the new one and right. all that. Because usually these horror fans are very passionate about what they love. And remake just spells money grab diluting the the industry the, the show and the, the mm-hmm. industry just taking advantage of that that love um well but i was really glad yeah. to hear you say that the movie wasn't like that when when i heard that from you because uh i was seeing all of it firsthand from the the culture at this con of everybody kind of banding together a little story thing as well uh with the new child's play yeah. is i thought it was interesting because charles e ray you start with the serial killer yeah. he gets in the body of a doll there's not much to explain why he's an evil prick no, <laughs> you know no, he you was just a killer right. already. You, there was no leap there. It was just he yeah. was in a new vessel. It was rather in his soul just going on or going to hell or whatever the whatever yeah. it would have been. It's just him putting himself in a doll because it was the only thing he could. Now, potential spoiler for the remake. Um, spoiler. <laughs> spoiler. I don't know if it's much of a spoiler, but Maybe. the coolest part for me watching it, especially as like a writer myself trying to sure. reinvent things, the way they reinvented uh, the buddy doll going wacko is it's it's almost like a flip thing it turns out really pure really innocent mm-hmm. it it has so many nods to different um animated doll or animated uh inanimate um, yeah. objects coming to life okay like they had do you remember the crusty the clown doll yeah in the yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they flipped the switch from good to evil yeah there's a moment not so blatantly hilarious as that <laughs> where it's just hope yeah it's like un, un, uninhibited which really yeah. comments to like he learns his evil from society. Oh, okay. Which is a great little social commentary. Yeah, it's stuff. kind of a Romero-y thing, like uh, people are the evil. It, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. And that's not the only Simpsons reference they have in it. They actually uh, give a nod to, do you remember, what are the dolls called? And they go, give me a hug. Oh, yeah, okay. So there was yeah. that um, intelligent little robot thing. And he, yeah. I think he literally says that or something says it in the film. And I laughed, and I had to explain it to uh, Liz because she's a huge Simpsons fan. She's like, "Oh my God, you're right." Yeah, that is a total nod to it. But there's little pieces like that where the reason he's evil makes sense. Mm-hmm. The reason he's doing these bad things to people makes sense, and even more so than Charles Lee Ray, because it's it's just it evolves. Charles yeah. Lee Ray was evil from the get go, and that's fine. Yeah. But this one was so cool that it actually took its time to progressively explain why he's doing what he's doing. Hmm. Not to mention the emotion you have in some of those scenes. I was yeah. feeling bad for the thing. Yeah, like the stupid so doll. <laughs> it's um, it's kind of tapping into the the questionable evils or dangers of AI and stuff like that. Um, yeah, there's what a... we're teaching it is it ends up being totally. the, our undoing with it, which is cool because yeah, we're at at the end and in a way uh, I mean, it's always humans to blame in a situation like that you created it yep. and you're also teaching it all this terrible bad shit so that's that's exactly. a cool take I, I actually really want to see it yeah it's worth watch man i Very think it cool. stands on so 